Welcome to Obsidian for Tabletop RPGs. Let's install some CSS files. Alright, g'day guys and welcome back tonight to another Obsidian video. Coming to you from quite late in Australia, so apologies, I am wearing my dressing gown. I hope you enjoy it, but it is warm and comfortable. Alright, so we're going to jump in tonight to some uh, custom CSS. I've been watching the forums and there's been some chatter about people uh, wondering how they can get the functionality that comes with certain themes without actually using that specific theme. Uh, for anyone who watches my videos regularly, you would know that I use the ITS theme and the ITS theme comes with a whole heap of really cool functionality like the ability to put in wiki style tables and the ability to uh, align your images left, right and center, right? There's all these really cool things it can do. Um, and you know, then there's people who want to use that sort of functionality, but they want to use the theme of their choice and they want to be able to make the tool look the way they want it to look, but also have the functionality that comes with it. The good news is that that's basically what CSS files are for, all right? And if you have a look at a theme like the ITS theme, you'll quickly find that uh, there is, uh, you know, CSS files in the GitHub repo, uh, repos that allow you to sort of go in and take that functionality and use it for your own sort of vault and the way you want to use it. So we're going to jump in tonight and have a bit of a look at this. All right, we're starting here with the uh, Obsidian TTRPG vault. Uh, just a heads up that this vault is available to my patrons. Um, and it basically has access to, um, you know, all of the shared tutorials and things that uh, people do use um, and also the uh, tutorials that I'm writing. All right, so let's have a look at here. This is a normal callout box, all right? And by normal callout box, I mean, I'm on the default theme here. Like this is the new version one theme. Um, it's just got a default callout box. And if you see here, there's the code for it. Um, we can come in here and we'll do another call out. These are, these are my templates that I've got for these sort of things. All right, and this is the treasure. All right, so this is a call out box and you can see that, you know, that looks quite nice, but how does that work? Effectively, it's got some CSS stuff in the background that's sort of making that happen. But let's jump over and have a look at a different vault. All right, this is my Obsidian Cyberpunk Red Vault. Uh, my players have decided we'd like to try some sci-fi, so uh, currently working on this vault. And the thing that stands out for me here is that if we have a look here, these are just, uh, oops, sorry, these are here, are callouts. Uh, this is a bit more of an advanced callout. I'm using some, uh, I believe it's HTML here to sort of do some right aligning in, in my callout box. But as you can see, it's purple and it's got a nice sort of border around it and it's got a glow effect to it. All right, we've got some more down here. And if I scroll a bit further down, we can see we've got the ITS theme going on. Um, so I've got the right hand info boxes, but again, we've got some sort of different sort of uh, visuals happening with all of this stuff. So, you know, it's, it's really cool capability to come in here and uh, be able to turn this stuff on. Um, and manipulate it in a way, I guess you could say, to, to do what it is that you want. Okay, so let's just jump back. We're going to go back to our test vault. No, we're not. We're going to go back to the this one here, TTRPG vault. All right, so let's pretend, okay, we have found something that we really like that we would like to use, or a theme that we really like. So let's jump in and turn on a theme. So we'll go down here to settings, and we'll come in here to appearance, and we'll go into manage. All right, now, there's lots of themes, as you can imagine. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of themes. And for the sake of it, let's just, let's install Prism. I haven't used Prism before, but I am aware that it's a very popular uh, plugin. All right, there we go. We're installed. We're using this theme now. All right, look at that. Our callout boxes have already changed into a completely different look and feel. Even our tabs have come into a completely different look and feel. All right, but let's say that I want to use the ITS callouts in this theme. Okay, um, how would I do that? Well, we go down to settings and we come up here to themes and we click manage. And this is where, this is kind of like a shopping market for me, all right? So all of these places generally, well, all of them will have a GitHub. And a GitHub is where the uh, authors of these themes store their stuff, okay? And when they store their stuff in these places, that allows us to go in and find these things. All right, so let's have a look. We have show installed only. 
Here's the ITS theme. I know the ITS theme has some CSS that I'd like to use. So what I do, I come in here and I click the repository link. This is going to take me to the GitHub for the repository. All right. And with everything, guys, read the readmes, have a look, because if we come down here and we have a look, um, you know, we've been through this before, there's all these different readmes and stuff you can use. So CSS classes, for example, uh, is a readme you can read to find all of this cool stuff that you can do with this plugin. But all of it's been driven by different sort of CSSs. So what am I looking for? All right. CSS files are stored in something called a snippets folder in Obsidian. Um, and just for the sake of the video, let's just go through and show you where that's happening. So if we go into the, let's go to Cyberpunk. All right, so this is my vault. Okay, within my vault, there's a dot Obsidian. Now the dot does mean that it's a hidden folder. So if you can't see this, you do need to go into folders and. Yeah, I'm doing this on a Windows. All right, uh, we're going to go File Explorer Options. Okay, and if you have a look in here under the View tab, all right, I just typed in folders and start to get into here. By the way, so I've got an option here: Hide Files and Folders. By default, this is says Don't Show. I've turned that on so that I can see everything that's hidden. I like to see everything on my computer. That's just how it is. Um, and there's an option here for hide extensions for null, null and file types. I do recommend that you do turn that off. It's always handy to be able to see file extensions in Windows. All right, but I've always done that, so I can now see the .obsidian folder. Inside there, you can see that I've got a snippets folder. Now, if you don't have a snippets folder, you can create a snippets folder, all right? Just go ahead and do that, all right? And in there, we've got CSS. Now. I play with a lot of stuff, guys. Like I download stuff from everywhere. I see someone like post something online. I'm like, oh, I'm going to try that. That's why I've got so many CSS files in here. Okay, so don't freak out. Yours is probably empty. Uh, it probably should be empty. I should probably clean this up. Let's be honest. But you know, I haven't got there. So anyway, snippets, and that's when you come over here and you see the snippets folder, and you're like, oh yes, all right. So CSS files go in the snippets folder. I wonder what's in this snippets folder. Let's have a look. All right, in here we can see all the DS, all the different CSS files, okay? Now, you probably started to recognize some of these things. So, callouts, um, checkboxes, data view cards, right? Like, these are different things that are enabled different things. If we come back to the guide, you'll say, oh, alternative checkboxes and callouts and image positions. All right, so image adjustments, for example, is going to be something that's very handy. So. Add rotation image. Oh, that's the change that's occurred. Let's go into image adjustments. So image adjustments being the ability to do rights and lefts and all that sort of stuff. Um, I want to copy this CSS file. Now, just a heads up that by default, you know, um, you can't download just a single file from GitHub, which is a bit of a pain in the bum, to be completely honest. All right, but it does have this copy button. So you press copy raw contents, you wait for the spinning and then the tick. All right, and then what you do is you open up Notepad or another text editor. All right, and you just paste everything in. All right, so I just Control Z and put that in, and that's now a copy of this file. Now I want to save it, so I'm going to save as. All right, and I'm going to put it into my um, where do I want it. I want to go back to here. I want to put it in my Cyberpunk folder. I reckon I've got, oh no, it's in there, cool. Do I want to do it? Yep, now we're going to do it into the TTRPG. All right, so notice I don't have a snippet to my TTRPG folder, so I'm going to create one. All right, now I have a snippets folder, and now I can save it in here. I'm going to call it the same name. All right, I like to do that. See, see up here, that's the name. All right, I'm just copying the name that's been used. This just means that I don't lose track of where this came from or I might like find it in the future and be like, oh, I already got that. Yeah, I'm going to save that. And that's now saved in this sImageAdjustments.css. I can close my notepad. I don't need it anymore. And I can go back into settings. All right, if you're not already there, appearance and scroll down the bottom here. If you don't see anything, just press the reload button, but otherwise just press the reload button and you'll see that the file that I've just created is now there for us to use. So S image adjustments is available. We can turn that on. All right, and now that's available to us. So 
just going to grab a picture. It's a really terrible picture. So we'll grab this one. This one's cool. I'm going to paste a picture in here because we've just turned on image adjustments. All right, and there's the default. Is I've got an image I've pasted from my web straight in. Uh, you can see that it's pasted. You can see it's got the exclamation mark, which means it's going to render that so we can see it. All right. But what if I want to move that to the right? Well, I can just type in pipe right now. All right, and now it's on my right. Now, if I come back in here and I turn this off, all right, see that that doesn't work. It's because the CSS file is what is driving all of this functionality. Okay, so by doing this, I've basically said, hey, I want, I want this functionality. Can you please turn it on? Now, what functionality exists and what are all the cool things you can do? I will absolutely say that like I cannot cover everything in this video, guys. Just know that what you can do is you can go to the GitHubs that have all of the themes. You can read the readmes, find the cool stuff that they're doing, and hopefully they have the CSS split out like the ITS theme does. And let's just run through a, another live example for you, right? Let's go back to appearance. Let's go into manage and have a look. So let's have a look. We've got the minimal theme and that's quite popular. Um, we can go and have a look at the GitHub for the minimal theme. I'm going to drag this back over here. All right, let's just see what they've got here. So we've got obsidian.css, all right, uh, theme.css. Not as uh, sort of organized, I guess, as the ITS theme, and the ITS theme is designed for people to come in. Oh, here we go though, what's this? So we found Obsidian Mineral, SRC, CSS. So actually it is organized, it's, it's just in a different way. So we've got a main, we've got a plugin compatibility, we've got a style settings. So there's different CSS files that are here. You know, it depends on what you're trying to do, to be completely honest on what you're looking for. And I will say this, like some of this content here, like you could come in, right? So here's the tabs, the reminder plugin, like you can come in and copy some of the elements of this if you know what you're doing and put it into a separate CSS file. I'm not gonna recommend you do that unless you know what you're doing, all right? And of course you can write your own CSS file as well. But the concept of this is like, you can come in here, you can download these and off you go. Now, what would I do in order to make sure that I get what I'm, I'm looking for is I'd come in here and have a look and say, oh, what is that I actually really want to get out of this? So like helper classes, for example, you know, it looks like we've got the ability to do an invert, for example. So there must be some sort of CSS in here that allows you to sort of take this out and use it yourself. So we've got a hash circle. I do wonder, can we find where that is occurring? And I'm just going to do a little bit of a search here. Can't guarantee you this is going to work. Here we go. There we have the circle. All right, I'm going to try something here, and I have not not prepared myself for this video, but let's just try, put the circle into here. I don't know if this is going to work, but let's save it as circle. Uh, what are we? We're in the minimal. Minimal circle dot CSS. All right. Go back to this one. No, go back to this one. All right, now we're going to go back. We're going to come down here, refresh it. Minimal circle is now here. So we turned that on. And I go back to my theme. And we're just going to find the helper class, crop image to a circle. All right, so we put this in. Uh, looks like we put a hash and that at the end. So if we do this, Oh, look at that. 
All right, so it's cropped it to a circle, and probably uh, we kind of need something that doesn't have a white background here to make this sort of stand out. Or actually, you know, we could actually just change this to the dark theme, maybe. There we go. Look at that. All right, so we went and we took the CSS file from the minimal theme. We've installed it into a completely different theme, and now we've got the functionality of it. All right, that is the power of CSS files, guys. And look, there is so many of these things out there. You're just going to have to go and do the um, the exploration for yourself. But the nuts and bolts of it is that a CSS file goes in your snippets folder within your vault. You turn it on, and then it can enable the functionality. Okay, so that's all there is to it. So. Anyway, guys, I hope you've uh, taken some value from that. Um, hopefully, it's enjoyable. If you do enjoy my content, please do like and subscribe using the buttons you know where you now find them. Um, just a reminder that my patrons do get access to the uh, Obsidian TTRPG Vault, which basically what I'm doing is um, you know writing some uh, tutorials, linking my videos in there now, um, and having basically some walkthrough instructions. Uh, with the actual code on how to use these things. So, you know, for anyone who went through our timelines video the other day, for example, it's linked here now. We've got examples of the timelines in both vertical, horizontal, and the ITS theme, which is obviously not enabled right now. All right, but it's got the code there as well. So you can go through and learn how I'm doing these things, plus also watch the video at the same time. So um, just throwing that out there in case anyone finds that useful. Uh, Outside of that, look, uh, huge thanks to my patrons. Loving actually uh, having a chat with you guys. You're all amazing. Um, and I will speak to you on the forum. So have a great night. Enjoy yourself. Bye.